Hi there, boys and girls. It's me, Miss Booksy. We've read The Wizard of Oz before, but let's read it again. See if you can find how many witches and wizards Dorothy meets. Hi. <laughs> I lived in a place called Kansas with my aunt and uncle. <laughs> uncle Henry and Aunt Em. Hello. Hello. We lived on the prairie, which is a great big piece of land that stretches for miles and miles and miles and miles and is very flat. So flat and empty that you could stand in your front yard and see all around you. Oh look, there's Farmer Ted. Hey Farmer Ted. <laughs> he can't hear me of course, he's way too far away. What? <laughs> Life on our farm was very hard. Aunt Em and Uncle Henry worked so hard that they never even had time to smile. In fact, when I was little, Aunt Em had completely forgotten what happiness sounded like. So whenever I laughed, she would do this. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy, you startled me. Everything at our house looked sad. The hot sun had baked everything until the land and all the buildings and even the people looked dried out and gray. Yeah, just like that. Just like an old black and white movie. The only thing that made me happy was my little dog, Toto. <laughs> Hi, Toto. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is it you? Is it you? <laughs> Sorry, but come on, look at how cute he is. Okay, on with the story. Here's where things get exciting. So, one day Toto and I were playing fetch with the stick. That's literally the only toy either of us had, but we made the best of it. <laughs> when we heard a crazy laugh sound. It sounded like a train. I know because I rode a train once all the way to Oklahoma. <laughs> anyway, the sound was getting louder and louder and louder. Toto, we have to hide. I think a freight train is coming for us or something. Wait, but there aren't any tracks here. How in the heck? Ah, a flying cow! Dorothy, a cyclone's coming! Cyclone? Oh no, cyclones are super scary. You know what a cyclone is, right? Tornado, twister, dust devil. Yeah, that. Toto, the house is totally flying. Oh my, this is even more exciting than the train ride. I wonder when we're gonna land, or where we're gonna land. Oh, oh, Toto, I think we've landed. I hope we're not too far from home. I wouldn't know the first thing about moving a house back into the yard. Wow, okay, we're definitely far from home. I bet we're even farther than Oklahoma. <laughs> What's that, a kitty cat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are you? He's a munchkin, and he's very grateful to you, noble sorceress. Grateful? To me? Why? Because you squished the Wicked Witch of the East. What? Me? No way! I wouldn't even squish a fly! Ask Toto. But you did squish her. Or your house did anyway. Look! But I didn't do that on purpose, I promise! Don't worry, we're happy she's gone. She was a very wicked witch who ruled over the munchkins for hundreds of years. Really? Yes, she was wicked. She was awful! She was the worst! Are you a munchkin? No, dear, I'm the witch of the north. Oh, a witch? Uh, but you seem nice. I thought all witches were wicked. I'm a good witch! Unfortunately, a good witch's powers are never as strong as a wicked one's. But now there is only one wicked witch left. Ah! Uh, where? Not here, sillies. The last wicked witch rules over the west. And she's even more wicked than her sister. Hey, she's gone. Did she come back to life? Oh no, zombie witches must be the absolute worst. No, no. See, when a witch is defeated, she disappears. Poof, like magic. Yay! The munchkins love magic. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, check this out. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I, it was only a trick. I thought you liked magic tricks. Magic's supposed to be nice. That was scary. Sheesh, tough crowd. I probably ought to get back to Kansas. Are you the good witch of Kansas? Me, no, there are no witches in Kansas. But you did fly here. Oh, no, that was just my house. My house did the flying, but I can't fly. I promise I'm not a witch. So anyway, how do I get back? Is there a train or something? Nope, guess you'll just have to stay. Yay, you can be our queen! All hail queen, what's your name? 
Dorothy? All oh, hail, hail Queen, Queen Dorothy! Dorothy. Hooray! Yeah. Hurrah! The munchkins cheered and celebrated their new queen. All oh, oh, hail, hail the Queen Dorothy! Our queen! But Dorothy didn't want to be queen, she just wanted to go home. I don't want to live in... Wait, what is this place called? Oz, dear. You are in the land of Oz! Why are you sad? Your house is right here. Yes, but it's not in the right place. And I'm sure Uncle Henry and Aunt Em must be so confused. They've never had their whole house just disappear like this. Let us cheer you up! Quick, someone tell a joke! Why didn't the Wicked Witch of the East cross the road? Why? Because you squished her with your house! <laughs> what, too soon? Okay, that's pretty good, but how about this one? I just flew in from Kansas, and boy, my house is tired. Okay, anyway, so we were talking about how I might get home. Can't go to the south. It's a great big desert where no one could survive. Except for the quadlings, but they eat sand and drink sunshine. Weird, next. And you can't go east because there are big mountains with giant birds and wapangs. Don't know what that is, but it sounds scary. Next. <laughs> and you could try and go west, but that's where the other wicked witch lives, and she is seriously wicked. No thanks. <laughs> Guys, what am I gonna do? Well, you could go center. Go center? Yes, go straight to the center of Oz, to the city of emeralds. That's where the wizard lives. He can help you get home. The wizard? Is he wicked? Oh, not at all. He's very wise. Well, how do I get to the center? To get to the city of emeralds, one must follow the road of yellow bricks. Road of yellow bricks? That road right there. Will it be dangerous? I will bless you with as much good magic as I can, but you must be careful. Good luck, Dorothy. I'm too tired and hungry to start my journey now. May I stay here a night, Munchkins? Of course you can, Queen Dorothy. The Munchkins were so excited to have Dorothy stay with them, even if it were only for one night. They prepared a feast of beautiful fruits that Dorothy had never seen, and lots of tiny cakes filled with candy and ice cream. Delicious! We want you to have these, Queen Dorothy. Me? Really? Well, you are the one who defeated the Wicked Witch. And they're also way too big for our munchkin feet. They're really beautiful. And legend says they're magic. Maybe they'll protect you on your journey to the Emerald City. Well, they are super comfy. And they do match my dress. <laughs> OK, I'll take them. The next morning, Dorothy and Toto said goodbye to the munchkins and began their trip down the yellow brick road when they passed a farm where something odd caught Dorothy's eye. Toto! Look at that scarecrow! He almost looks like a real man, doesn't he? <laughs> Did you just wink? Maybe. <laughs> you can talk? I've never seen a talking scarecrow. Well, how do you do, Mr. Scarecrow? Not very well. Oh, no? A lot of crows here? It's not that. I'm just very uncomfortable up here. I mean, I got a pole stuck in my back. But all scarecrows do. Well, trust me, it's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Who's that? The munchkin who put you up there? No, the crows. Ugh, ah! oh, get out of here. Oh, right. <laughs> well, why don't you just get down from there? That would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, wait, I know. It's because I don't have a brain. You don't? Nope, nothing but straw between my ears. That's too bad. I really like having a brain. At least I think I do. But it's my brain that makes me think that. Uh, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll help you down. Huzzah! So, what's your name? Oh, how impolite of me. I'm Dorothy from Kansas. I'm on my way to see the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard? I bet he has brains. Yes, and he's going to help me get back home. Hey, maybe he could give you some brains. Why didn't I think of that? Mm, the whole brain thing. <laughs> oh, right, the brain thing. See, it's really annoying. Well, it's settled. You'll come with me to the Emerald City, and the wizard will help me get to Kansas, and he'll give you a brain. Huzzah! And off they went to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. 
There they are, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow traveling the yellow brick road. They walked for miles and miles, and finally, phew, I'm pooped. Let's just sit down and rest for a while. Okay, wait, why? Because I'm tired and hungry. That means I need to eat something. I'm never hungry, and that's a good thing because my mouth is only painted on. If I cut a hole there, all my straw would fall out. Then you'd have a very funny shaped head. It's true. Dorothy, can you tell me more about Kansas? Sure. I live there with my Aunt Em and Uncle Henry and Toto, of course. <laughs> it's very quiet, except for when there's a cyclone and everything is all gray. <laughs> Not beautiful and colorful like here. Well, why do you want to go back if it's so nice here? Because Kansas is my home and there's no place like home. Then why did you come here in the first place? I didn't mean to. My house just landed here after a storm. Long story. <laughs> and then yada yada, I squished the Wicked Witch of the East and now I have her shoes. Do you like them? They are very pretty. But wait, did you say you squished the Wicked Witch of the East? Yes, but not on purpose. The munchkins were very happy. <laughs> I'm their queen now. Wow! But enough about me. Tell me your story. Me? I don't know anything. I was only made one day ago. Ooh, tell me about that. Okay. I was made by a farmer. First he made my head and he painted on ears. Then I could hear. Next I had eyes and I could see. Then the farmer painted on a nose. I could smell corn and crows. Ah! Yikes, ah! crows. Luckily, I couldn't scream because I didn't have a mouth yet. So the farmer didn't know that I was afraid of the crows. Imagine a scarecrow scared of crows. Not good. When the farmer finished putting me all together, he stuck me up on a stick in the middle of the field. I didn't like being left alone with all those crows, so I tried to run, but it was no use. I was stuck. The crows all laughed at me and pecked my head and ate up all the farmer's corn right in front of me. They were so mean. Well, except for one very old crow. Just ignore those silly crows. But why aren't they afraid of me? I'm supposed to be a scarecrow. They know you're stuck up here and don't know how to get down. If only you had a brain. And I decided right then that I would get a brain one day. I just didn't know how. Then you came along, and now we're on our way to get me a brain from the great Oz of Emerald City. Speaking of, I'm ready to journey on. Let's go. Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow set off again on the road of yellow bricks. Everything was going just fine until... What was that? You're asking me? I don't have a brain. I don't really know stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> Wait, I think I hear it again. Shh, Toto! I hope it's not a crow. Ah! Don't chop me! I would never! Why are you groaning? I've been stuck in this position for a whole year. It's very uncomfortable. Well, what can I do to help? Get my oil can, please. Oh, my joints are rusted stiff. Get my neck first. Ah, much better. Now my arm, please. What a relief. I thought I might be holding that forever. Feel better? A million times better. You saved my life. Dorothy saved my life too. And she squished the Wicked Witch of the East. Whoa, are you a witch? No, why does everyone keep asking me that? I'm just a girl from Kansas. We're on our way to the Wizard of Oz. I'm getting a brain. And I'm hoping to get back home. Do you know the great Oz? I never met him, but hey, do you think he could give me a heart? You don't have a heart? How sad, I think. It is sad, enough to make me cry. But if I cry, I'll get all stiff and rusty again. Well, you absolutely must join us on our trip. To the wizard we go. Wait. Oil can. Good call. Okay, now to the wizard we go. Hey, look, 475 schmiles to Emerald City. I think they mean miles. No, distance is measured in schmiles. In Oz, 
How long are they? I don't know. Neither do I. But maybe that's because we don't have brains. You don't have a brain either? Nope. I used to have both. And believe me, the heart is more important. Why is that? The heart is the way to love. Love is happiness. And happiness is the best thing in the world. Well, how did you lose your heart in the first place? It's a long story. We like stories. <laughs> okay. I was a wood chopper, chopping trees and selling the wood for a living. Then I met a girl and we fell in love. I asked her to marry me and she said yes. I was so happy. Yay, what a happy ending. There's more. She lived with a selfish old woman who didn't want her to get married. She wanted the girl to stay and work for her forever. The woman went to the wicked witch and paid her to curse me. What did the witch do? She took my leg. How was I supposed to work standing on just one leg? Oh my! I went to a tinsmith who made me a new leg made of tin. The old woman was very mad. She paid for another curse and this time I lost my other leg. The tin smith built me another leg of tin. Then what happened? Next, the witch cursed my arms and my head and all of me until I was a man made of tin. But the girl still loved me and I loved her. The wicked witch did the worst thing she could possibly do. What? what? She cursed my heart. The tinsmith didn't know how to make a new heart for me. And without a heart, I couldn't feel love. I've been sad and lonely ever since. What a sad story. I think. Maybe if I had a brain, I would have understood it better. We'll get you your heart. The wizard is wise and good, and he'll help all of us. I just know it. The gang continued toward the City of Emeralds, saddened by the Tin Woodman story. But soon, sadness gave way to scaredness. These woods are kind of scary. I wonder how many more schmiles until we're out of here. We're safe. I have my oil can. The scarecrow can't feel anything. And you have the mark of the good witch and the magic slippers. But Toto, what's protecting him? We are. Ah, we are? Oh. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you biting a poor little dog. I didn't bite him. No, but you tried to. You're nothing but a great big coward. I know. I'm sorry. Going after a scarecrow, a tin man, and a tiny dog. Oh, scarecrow? That sounds scary. See, I'm the most cowardly coward who ever lived. It's okay to be scared sometimes, but you can't go around picking on smaller things just so you can feel brave. Where'd you get your courage? I don't know. I guess I've just naturally been tough. I wish I was tough. I've always been afraid of everything. Bears, spiders, kittens. Kittens? Who's afraid of kittens? Mice are, but I'm afraid of mice too. Hi, Vey. Let's go, guys. Wait, you're just gonna leave me here? Out in these scary woods all by myself? Let me come with you. I'll protect you. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> I'm really sorry I scared you. It was a silly old thing to do, I know. I just wanted to look fearless. Oh, please tell Toto I'm sorry too. Wait. <laughs> We're going to see the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to get a brain. And I'm getting a heart. Maybe the wizard could give you courage? Is the wizard very scary? Wait, never mind. I don't even care. I'll go ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. See, you're already a little braver. <laughs> what are you asking the wizard for? I just want to go home to Kansas. Is Kansas a scary place? Wait, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Then let's go find that wizard. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion, and Toto were officially off to see the wizard. The Scarecrow would ask for brains, the Tin Man for a heart, and the Lion would get some courage. And that is, if he could work up the nerve to ask. <laughs> and of course, Dorothy and Toto would ask the good wizard to get back home to Kansas. All they had to do was follow the road of yellow bricks. Uh-oh. Now why wouldn't they build a yellow brick bridge as well? It doesn't look so far. I could probably jump across. Well, look who's being brave. <laughs> I'd be way too scared to cross. Now why'd you have to go and say that? 
For a second, I forgot I was a Freddy cat. You can do it. Don't be scared. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But you're going to have to carry each of us across one at a time. You mean I have to do it more than once? Take me first. I'm made of straw, so if you drop me, I won't be hurt. All you have to do is stuff me back together. Good thinking. And I don't even have a brain. And me with no courage. What a team. Here we go. Woohoo! You did it! I knew you could! <laughs> the cowardly lion bravely carried across the others one by one. Whew, great work! <laughs> now let's go meet the wizard! The gang marched forth and soon found themselves in a very dark and scary forest. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Nope! Nope! Not okay! What is that? Kalitas! What's a Kalita? A very scary creature. Well, you thought Toto was scary, so... <laughs> Kalitas had the body of a bear and the head of a tiger. Oh my! Uh, that is scary! Told ya! Oh, what are we gonna do? Run! That's way too far to jump across. Hey, the Tin Man could cut down that tree and we could use it to walk across. Splendid idea. Okay, steady now. The Kalitas are coming. Oh, yay, we all made it. Kalitas! Ah! I've got it. Tin Man, chop this side of the tree. That was close. Great job, Tinny. <laughs> hey, it was the Scarecrow's idea. You sure you don't already have a brain in there? <laughs> Dress straw, I'm sure of it. If you say so. You guys ready to hit the yellow brick road again? Just a second, my heart is racing. Ooh, can I listen? Wow, what a ticker. You'll get one soon. And I'll get my courage. And I'll get my brain. Let's go. It had been a long and scary journey so far, but they were determined to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz, even if it meant they might run into the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Lion continued along the road of yellow bricks, anxious and excited to find the wizard. Look, a river. Oh, good. I sure am thirsty after all that jumping and running. Um, guys, how are we going to get across? Again? Okay, seriously, who designed this road? This is just poor planning. It's too wide for me to jump. It's too wide for the tree thing. Hey, what if I chop some wood and build a raft? Great idea! <laughs> the Tin Woodman got to work and soon built a perfectly seaworthy vessel. The gang hopped on and began to paddle toward the other shore. There she is! The brat who squished my sister. It's payback time, sweetheart. <sighs> Suddenly, the wind picked up and the river began rushing. Oh no, we're floating away from the yellow brick road. And straight for the land of the Wicked Witch of the West, the scariest witch of all. What are we gonna do? Well, I can't swim, I'll fall apart. And I'll rest. Pedal harder. They all paddled as hard as they could, but the poor Scarecrow got his paddle stuck in the mud, and the raft went rushing on down the river without him. Scarecrow! Dorothy! We'll come back for you, I promise! Well, here I am stuck on a pole again, and this time in the middle of a river. I guess I'll never get any brains. Maybe I can swim against the current. What about us? Grab a hold of my tail, and I'll pull you to shore. Ah, there's a fish! It's just a tiny little goldfish. It touched me! Phew, we made it. But where are we? We're so far from the yellow brick road and our poor scarecrow. This is so sad. Don't cry, you'll rust. We'll just have to walk along the river until we find him. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin man walked along the river looking for their friend. There he is! Shoo! Ah! Go away! Dorothy, you came back! Of course!
course! We're here to save you! Okay, yeah, um, how are we gonna do that? There's no wood on this side of the river, so I can't build another raft! Lion, can you swim out there to rescue him? I'm so tired and weak from all the swimming. Plus, I'm scared of crows. A lion scared of a crow? That's silly. Ah, big stork! Our friend is out there stuck. We have to save him. He's coming with us to find the Wizard of Oz. This isn't the right road. You need the yellow one. We know, we just got a little off track. <laughs> but now we can't leave until we save the scarecrow. I can try to lift him. Mind you, I'm used to carrying babies, not straw people. He might be too heavy. Oh, he's very light. Okay. Oh no, incoming! Oh shush, I'm here to save ya. Whoa! Hooray! Thank you so much! <laughs> no prob. Well, I better be on my way. Watch out for the Wicked Witch of the West. She's a tough nut. We will. See ya. <laughs> well, gang, shall we? Yup. I think the yellow brick road is just across this field of flowers. Ooh, poppies. They're so pretty. <laughs> Yes, they are. And just wait until you smell them. The Wicked Witch of the West knew these poppies gave off a very powerful scent, one that would make even the largest beasts fall into a never-ending sleep. When you're asleep, I'll take back those sapphire slippers, and then you'll be powerless. I'm getting sleepy. <sighs> Me too. Sweet dreams. <laughs> We really need to get back to the yellow brick road. But maybe just a little nappy wappy foist. Yeah, <sighs> nighty night. That's right, go to sleep, Dorothy. Now, time for Mama to get some new shoes. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Must be having a nightmare, scaredy cat. Okay, back to the shoes. Ha, they're mine. Wait a second. They're stuck. The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic and my flying monkeys. The Wicked Witch of the West summoned her flying monkeys. Sup, boss? Take this girl to my castle. Aye, aye. <laughs> Sleep tight, boys. When you wake, your little friend Dorothy will be long gone, and the sapphire slippers will be mine. All mine! <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off, and Dorothy woke up. <laughs> this frightened the monkeys, <laughs> and they promptly dropped Dorothy to the ground below. <sighs> Ow! <sighs> okay. That was scary. But look, come back on the yellow brick road. But what about my friends? If I go back for them, the poppies will make me fall asleep forever. What to do? Dorothy thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with a solution. Until... Wait a second. These shoes are supposed to be magical. And the good witch supposedly blessed me with some kind of magic. I must be able to do something. Hmm. Dorothy tried to get her magic shoes to come up with something magic. She tapped them together. She tried doing a dance routine. She tried saying some magic sounding words. Ta-da! Abracadabra! Kazam! But nothing seemed to work. It's useless. What is? Who said that? I did, down here. Oh, hi. <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? I don't think so. My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But then I woke up and these flying monkeys were carrying me away. I screamed and they dropped me. And here I am. Flying monkeys, eh? They work for the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh no. But it's a good thing you got out. The poppies are very dangerous. Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them. But how do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them. We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us. But my friends are way too big for mice to carry. They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew, piece of cake. The mouse squeaked out a call to the other mice and soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. You wait here, we'll be back in a sec. 
and the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited, and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion! Oh, he's not that scary at all. Watch! <laughs> Eek! Mouse! See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and then the wicked witch's flying monkeys took me. But then I fell down here, and these lovely mice helped save you. How kind! And look, we're so close to the Emerald City! Let's go! Bye-bye, mouse friends. Thanks again for helping us. Anytime. Goodbye. And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Dorothy and the gang skipped along the yellow brick road, and before long, they saw it. <gasps> the Emerald City. Whoa. Let's go. Hello. Yes. We're here to see the wizard. And why, may I ask? Because I want a brain. And I a heart. I want courage. And I want to go home to Kansas. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I see. Hmm. <laughs> oh, very well. Okay, goodbye. The wizard will see you. Wonderful! Yes, he is. Right this way. Dorothy and the gang were led through the all-green, very sparkly, emerald-laden city. Wow! Pretty! I find this green very soothing. You first. Wish me luck. Hello? What do you want? Hi, sir. I want to ask you, please, if you will help me return home. Where is home? Kansas, sir. Oh, you don't say. Oh, have you been there? <clears throat> and why should I grant you this request? Because you're wonderful, and everyone says so. Even the good witch of the North said so. She did? I mean, how do you know her? Oh, I met her in the Munchkin Land. See, I landed in Oz rather accidentally. My house, it got swept up in a tornado, and I... It landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and it squished her. Long story short, everybody told me to come here and that you could help me get home to Kansas. So, will you help me? You squished the Wicked Witch? Yes. I will help you get home. You will? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! But, you must do something first. Anything. Your wish is my command. You must defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold up, what? You squished the Wicked Witch of the East. Now go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. But I didn't mean to hurt the first witch. That was an accident. I couldn't hurt anyone on purpose. Not even a Wicked Witch. Then I cannot help you. Next. Dorothy was devastated. She went out to the others and tried to hide her disappointment. How did it go? It was interesting. Good luck in there, Scarecrow. But the Scarecrow went in and came out just as disappointed as Dorothy. Then the Tin Man, then the Lion. Turns out they all got the same answer. Unless they defeated the Wicked Witch of the West, the wizard would not help them. I'll never get a brain. I'll never have a heart. I'll never get courage. And I'll never see Aunt Em or Uncle Henry or Kansas ever again. <laughs> What's wrong? The wizard told us he can't help us unless we go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Oof, scary. Well, good luck. Well, we're not gonna do it. Come on, guys, let's go. Where to? I don't know. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around till he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Uh-oh, kids. This does not look good. The Wicked Witch of the West had ordered the flying monkeys to carry Dorothy and her friends to different locations. The Tin Man was to be put in the recycling bin, the Scarecrow pulled into pieces, and the Lion locked away and sold to the zoo. Dorothy's fate was to be delivered to the Witch's Castle, a visit she was not looking forward to. Hey, guys, 
How about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. Yeah, sorry kid. You do not want to make the Wicked Witch angry. Yeah, I guess you're right. But the good news is, we won't hurt you. Okay, good to know. Thanks, but why? You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely going to try to take those. The flying monkeys were right. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted nothing more than to get those sapphire slippers from Dorothy. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoes. Gotta get those shoes. Don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery shoes? Get it? Because they're slippers? But seriously, give me the shoes! I got it. Good one. But no, I'm okay in these shoes. Jeez, she really wants these shoes. And why is this castle so dirty? Ew. The witch waited and waited, but the only time Dorothy ever removed her slippers was when she took a bath. But the wicked witch was dreadfully afraid of water, so she never dare tried to steal them during bath time. I guess I'll just have to wait a little longer. Drat! Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Gimme! No, you gimme! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! Give it! No! Come on! Stop it! <laughs> now look what you've done! What's another mess? You make me clean all day anyway. Not that. I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! You melted me! You knew I couldn't touch water! I thought you were just afraid of it. Now you've destroyed me just like you destroyed my sister! You're a terrible girl! You're a bad, no good, stinking... Blah, 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 blah. But the witch melted before she could get out the last insult. Oh, I guess that's why she hated water. Who would have thunk it? Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey guys, how did you get here? I thought I'd never see you again. No time to explain now. We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch. Come on. Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh? huh? I'll explain later, too. Let's go see the wizard! Oh yeah! Now he'll grant our wishes! Hooray! Hooray! The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. The Scarecrow would get his brains, the Tin Man would get his heart, the Cowardly Lion would get his courage, and Dorothy and Toto would finally go back home to Kansas. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? I told you not to come back until you destroyed the Wicked Witch. And we have your greatness. This is not a joke. I know, she's gone. Dorothy melted her. Accidentally, but yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so we've come back so you can grant our wishes. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? So I can't go home to Kansas? <laughs> I won't get a brain. I won't get a heart. I won't get any courage. This is baloney. You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard. You're a charlatan, a humbug. Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us. Who are you? The wizard? So you're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm actually from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I landed here accidentally some years ago and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard. And well, here we are. So you're not a wizard. So you don't have any power. Um, no, not at all. Then we came all this way and did all of this for nothing? But you did destroy the Wicked Witch. That's a pretty big deal. How did you do it? Dorothy and the gang explained how it all went down. 
First, of course, they had been captured by the flying monkeys. The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever, so he called out and asked them to help put him back together, and they did. Once he was back to his old self, the scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, cause he had rusted quite a bit from crying. And they set off to find the lion. The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. It was not a nice zoo at all. It was gloomy and full of terrible creatures like Kalitas. Remember those? Very scary. Not a good place for a lion with no courage. There, the scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the Tin Man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then, the lion was free. It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the Tin Man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up, even Kalitas. The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. They were all very scared, especially when the flying monkeys saw them and swooped in. But the Lion put on his brave face and roared, making all the monkeys fly away shrieking. He was ready to take on the Wicked Witch too, but when they got inside the castle, they found Dorothy had already melted her. And so, there you have it. That's how we defeated the Wicked Witch. Too bad it was all for nothing. That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. You'll be celebrated here forever, Dorothy. You'll be a star. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? It was your idea how to pick the lock on the cage, too. Hey, yeah. Well, I guess it was. See? You've had brains the whole time. And you, Tin Man, you've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. Well, they looked unhappy. I wanted to help. That's heart. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. And you certainly seemed brave a moment ago when you were roaring at me. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. No worries. But don't you guys see? You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? Dorothy, can you use them to get home? Magic shoes? You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope. No idea. I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the Good Witch of the North. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? I'm so glad you made it to the Emerald City to see the great and powerful wizard. Yeah, about that. We'll chat later, but now we need to get this girl home to Kansas. And we were thinking... I was thinking... I do that now. Yes. The Scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the sapphire slippers to get home. So do you? Oh yes! It's quite simple. Take three steps in the sapphire shoes and say your wish. And then I'll be home. And then you'll be home! What? It's that easy? <laughs> Wait! You have to say goodbye first! Oh, right. I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Oh wow. <laughs> Don't! You'll rust! Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> Someone better get his oil can. Lion, you're braver and fiercer than any Kalita in the whole land of Oz. Thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh, shucks, Dorothy. I'll miss ya. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. <laughs> Be nice, Toto. <laughs> Scarecrow, you've been with me the longest. I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. Aw, oh, Dorothy, do you have to go? I do. I miss my family and my house and... Hey, wait a sec. My house is in Munchkinland. Huh, I wonder where Auntie Em and Uncle Henry live now. Well, I better go. I love you guys and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. <gasps> we'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. 
It was more colorful than she had remembered, but maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. Did you kids know the answer? That's right. Dorothy meets four witches and wizards. The Wicked Witch of the East, the Witch of the North, the Wicked Witch of the West, and the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Hi, boys and girls. It's me, Miss Booksy, here at Cool School. Snow White is one of my all-time favorite stories. Let's read it again, but this time, tell me if you can find these apples. Let's go. Once upon a time, there was a princess named Snow White. Well, that's my nickname. My real name is Margaret Katrine Simone Anna von Kluster Stadenstank. Yeah, so most people just called her Snow White. And pretty much everyone agreed that Snow White was the coolest girl around. She was funny. And then I said, that's not a yo-yo, it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> she was smart. A-N-I-S-M. And that's how you spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. And best of all, she was kind to every creature on Earth. She was even kind to her stepmother, Katrine Francesca Karina Amelia Anastasia von Kleschberg-Dottenstonk. But you can call her the Evil Queen for short. As you might guess, the Evil Queen was not nice at all. It's like she only cares about herself. Yes, that was the problem. The Queen did not care for anyone other than herself, and she cared for herself way too much. She even traveled all the way to Grim Forest, where the witches live, just to buy a magic mirror that would tell her how great she was. This one is real nice. It'll tell you how wonderful you are. Error, error. Oh! Never mind, that one's no good. Okay, now this magic mirror is top of the line. You're gonna love it. Honestly, I'm getting some mean vibes from you. Ugh, next. Uh, okay, uh, this one. This is a great magic mirror. Go ahead, ask it. Excuse me, Mr. Mirror. No, 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 no. You gotta say mirror, mirror on the wall. It likes that. All right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You are my queen. You are the most amazing person of all. You're the best. Aha. I'll take it. Oh man, Snow White's stepmother loved that mirror. She would ask it like a dozen times a day if she was still the most amazing person in all the land. Will you pass the gravy please? Hold on, hold on. Mirror, mirror on the wall. It's your turn. Yes, yes, one moment. Mirror, mirror on the wall. This again. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who I'm trying to sleep. So yeah, the mirror was pretty annoying. The queen loved giving Snow White chores, as evil queens tend to do. So one day she was cleaning the evil queen's bedroom. She was just about finished when she noticed some schmutz on the magic mirror. I'm definitely not allowed to touch the mirror, but she did say the room had better be spotless. I'd hate to make her mad. Snow White reached out to dust the mirror and... <gasps> it's you! What? You are the most amazing person in the land! Why, thank you, but don't say that. The queen will get, like, really mad. Ugh, she is so mean. But I can see that you have a good heart. <laughs> Are you actually just an x-ray machine? <laughs> no, I mean you have a good soul. The queen has a rotten soul, by the way. Well, thanks for the compliment, but you really must keep telling her that she's the best. It's dangerous to make her mad. Promise? Okay. Long story short, the mirror did not keep his promise for long. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most amazing person of all? You, my lady, are an amazing person. Of all? Yeah, sure, of all. Say it then, say the whole thing. Uh, I meant to say that you, my queen, are the most amazing person of all? Good, just checking. Uh... What was that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. It sounded like something. It's just that Snow White may be more amazing. But the queen didn't scream or break things, and she didn't cry. She was just very quiet. That's not good, kids. When the evil queen gets quiet, it means she's really, 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 really mad. And like Snow White said, that can be very dangerous. I will get rid of Snow White. That sounds bad. Poor Snow White, she didn't do anything. Yeah, I was just minding my own business. The evil queen tried all kinds of different ways to get rid of the princess. She locked me out. Oh, 
She tried to mail me to Alaska. She even tried to send me away in a hot air balloon. You might be wondering why my dad didn't step in and do anything. Well, he was away on King Business at the semi-annual Royal Symposium. That's where natural born kings and queens go to learn royal stuff, like how to balance giant crowns on their heads and how to wave at a parade. So I was on my own. The queen was getting frustrated. She couldn't get rid of Snow White. She finally decided to go back to the witches of the Grim Forest. Surely they could get the job done. Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. I need a curse to get rid of a princess. Oh, goody. I just love those curses. What do you need? A hundred years sleep? Make her lose her singing voice? Ooh, maybe we turn her into a frog. I just want her to go away forever. Ooh, I see. A one-way ticket. Exactly. Well, my sister is a travel agent. We can send her to China. I was thinking something a little more permanent. Okay, okay. Well, how about a classic de-atomizer? What is that? I don't know, but it sounds cool, right? Can't you just do something, I don't know, witchy? Oh, sure. That's easy. Here's what you need. A bubbling cauldron, a rose, Ouch! watch out for the thorns, the tooth of the shark, eee! a rotten egg, gross, a picture of Santa Claus, um, random, and a lock of Snow White's hair. And check. Mix it all together and say these words. Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? And just like that, Snow White disappeared. Didn't think it would work, did you? Yeah, neither did I. But here's the thing, boys and girls. People don't really disappear. They just appear somewhere else. And that's what happened to Snow White. She appeared in another fairy tale. Whoa, where am I? This isn't our kingdom. Hey, I think that's Cinderella. How'd I get into her storyline? Oh, maybe her fairy godmother can help me get home. Did somebody say fairy godmother? I did. Do you want to go to the ball too? I can let you go. But you can't win the heart of the prince. I already promised that to my goddaughter, Cinderella. That's okay, I don't need a prince. I just want to go home. Oh, gotcha. And with a wave of her wand, Cinderella's fairy godmother sends Snow White back home. Whoa, and at the very same moment, the evil queen was asking the magic mirror if she was the most amazing person in all the land. Uh, no, it's still Snow White. What? I got rid of her. It should be me. This is awkward. Oh, I'll get her. And this time, I'll make sure she never comes back. I've got a wicked good plan. <laughs> I think you have something in your teeth. Oh, be quiet. Did you find all the apples? Let's see where they were hiding. Found number one. There's number two. There's number three. Boy, that was a hard one. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if you found all the apples. It's okay if you didn't, you can always try again. Hi kids, it's me, Miss Booksy here at Cool School. I know you kids love Cinderella, and it's one of my favorites too. But what were Ella's evil stepsister's names? Hmm, let's watch chapter one to find out. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Cinderella. Ahem, that's not my real name. That's just what my mean stepsisters and stepmother call me. <laughs> my real name is Ella. Actually, let's begin my story there. When I was Ella and everything was nice and peaceful and lovely. I was an only child, but I had a ton of pets. So when I was little, I was never, ever lonely. Two cats, Sir Bonkers and Lady Blinky, a dog named Patches, a hamster named Spinner, a tortoise named Fudge, a lizard named a lizard -bith, a pony named Pegasus, not a real Pegasus, but that would be really cool, <laughs> and a goldfish named Goldie. Okay, so Goldie wasn't such great company. Moving on. My dad was the greatest dad of all time, seriously. And he told the awesomest bedtime stories ever. And then the big bad wolf said, little pig, little pig, let me in. And then the little pig squealed, not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. See, he was really good at doing voices. So let's see, my pets were cool, my dad was the best. Oh, and our town was super neat too. We lived in the kingdom, excuse me, 
a queendom of Queen Elaine the First. She put on fabulous tea parties and concerts and musicals, like all the time. <laughs> so yeah, things were pretty great. But I must have been cursed by an evil witch or something because one day my dad told me that he was getting married. <sighs> okay, that's not the terrible part. It would have been awesome if you were marrying Queen Elaine or somebody cool like that, but no way. Somehow he found the meanest lady ever in the history of meanness. But it wasn't his fault, I guess, because at first she pretended to be so nice. Hello there, Ella. Do you like candy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey! Too late. You snooze, you lose. And those were my two new stepsisters, Gritzel and Unga. They never even bothered pretending to be nice. Anyway, my dad was duped, and suddenly I had a new family. My stepsisters had a real su casa is mi casa kind of attitude. In other words, they took all my That's stuff. That's mine! I want it. Mine! Gimme! Okay, I'm all about sharing is caring, guys, but come on, you can't take all my clothes! Here, you can wear this. Then they said they were scared of all my animals, so scared that my dad had to banish them all to the barn outside. Even a lizard bit, she'll get cold. Too scary. But what about Goldie? Come on, all she does is sit there and go. Take her away. They all have to go. I'm sorry, guys. I'll visit you. The great animal exodus wasn't the end of it. Whenever my dad was away, the step monsters would treat me like a servant. I did the sweeping. I did the windows. I did the vacuuming. And being big old meanies, Gritzel and Unga constantly made messes on purpose. Whoops! I cleaned nonstop, day in and day out. And I was a mess, always covered in dust and grime, which led to me getting a new nickname. Ew, Ella, you're all covered in cinders from the chimney. Maybe we should call you Cinder Ella. Cinder Ella! So yeah, this all lasted a few years. Then, my dad left for this big fishing trip expedition thingy. That's when my stepmother decided I should move him to the barn. It was cold and dark and a little scary, but I had my animals and that was nice. Aw, plus some field mice. Hi guys. <laughs> anyway, my dad wouldn't be gone forever, right? He'd come back and see how mean my step family was and give him the boot, right? Do you guys remember now? That's right, it's Gritzel and Unga. Ugh, they are the worst. Let's watch the rest of the story now. Life in the barn wasn't so bad. Cinderella had made a nice little room for herself. <sighs> being that much closer to the rooster meant I never overslept. And it sure was convenient being able to just roll over and start my chores. <laughs> but I missed my old life especially my dad. It seems like he had been gone for his fishing trip like forever. Then I heard the awful news. Extra, extra, awful news. Local dad captured by pirates. Yep, my dad had been captured by a gang of pirates. And to make matters worse, my stepmother and stepsisters didn't even seem to care. He'll be fine. Who cares? I can't worry. It gives me wrinkles. Oh, they were the worst. Fine. I'll go find him. Don't be ridiculous. You have to stay here and take care of us. No way. I'm going to go find him and fight the pirates. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll hire a search party. They'll find him and bring him home. Really? Really. But like, really, really? Really, really, really. Gosh. Can we stop talking about pirates and like get some breakfast? Yeah, really. Cinder, really. <laughs> <sighs> Fine. With my dad gone so long, things went from very bad to way worse. My stepmother decided it was time for my stepsisters to get married. And of course, I had to help. There were etiquette lessons. The most difficult task was teaching them how to be not terrible. Would you like to go for a walk? You don't have a carriage. Ew, next. Okay, so maybe don't yell so much. Why? Never mind. It was beginning to feel pretty useless. My stepsisters were just big old meanies. 
Meanwhile, my dad was still out there somewhere with a crusty old gang of pirates. Actually, that doesn't sound so bad compared to these guys. Good thing I still have you guys. <laughs> Good night, Sir Bonkers, Lady Blinky, Patches, Spinner, Fudge, a lizard Beth, Pegasus, Goldie. <laughs> Good night to you, Squeakers, Pip and Puff Puff. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Rooster. <laughs> Shh. Save it for the morning. That night, I had a beautiful dream. My dad was home safe and sound. My stepmother and Gritzel and Unga were nowhere in sight. Amazing, I was all dressed up, no more rags. And I had the prettiest slippers. It was almost as if they were made of glass. Ah! <gasps> What's all that racket? Why didn't you wake me, Mr. Rooster? We must get to work immediately. This is so exciting. What's going on? The queen is having a ball and we're all invited. Whoa, I just had a dream that I was dressed up in a beautiful gown, <laughs> just like I was going to a royal ball. That's so funny. That is funny, you in a gown. Get it? Because you wear rags. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Whatever, they're rude. I was used to it, but a royal ball? Now this was exciting. I have to make a dress and my hair. What am I gonna do with my hair? And I have to prepare some witty banter. I haven't been around people, well, people I actually want to talk to in forever. <laughs> I hope people still like knock-knock jokes. Those are my specialty. My stepmother had said I couldn't go to the ball. Well, I would just have to find a way, wouldn't I? <laughs> I began preparations in secret. My stepsisters went through dresses like they were going out of style, so I had lots of material to choose from to craft a perfect gown. <laughs> a little satin here, a little silk there, some velvet, pearls, and voila! <gasps> the most beautiful dress in the world. Oh. Shoes wouldn't be so easy though. My stepsisters had thrown out all of my shoes back when they first moved in. None of these shoes fit. Anyway, one day I was cleaning the attic when I found a box that I had never noticed before. <gasps> shoes, these must have belonged to my mom. They were beautiful slippers that looked almost as if they were made of glass, just like in my dream. <gasps> and next to the shoes was the most exquisite necklace I'd ever seen. Everything was coming together perfectly. But it's not like the royal ball was the only thing I was thinking about. Curiously, I hadn't heard anything about my dad. You know, the whole being captured by pirates thing. Supposedly my stepmother was on it, but I just wasn't sure I could trust her. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Harvey Beeswax, private investigator, at your service. Hi, Mr. Beeswax. My dad was captured by a gang of pirates. I need your help. Pirates, eh? Yes, and my stepmother said that she can't find him, but she's done diddly squat. Diddly squat? That's not enough. I know. So, do you think you can find him? It'll be tough, but I'm the best private eye in the city. If anybody can find your pop, it'll be me. Great. I charge three gold bits an hour, plus expenses. Oh, right. Um, money. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Sorry, kid. No money, no detective. Wait. What if I paid you in jewels? Jewels? I like jewels. What do you got? So, I brought my mother's necklace to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Oh well, at least I still had the dress and shoes. Or so I thought. When I got home, I found this. It's mine. No, mine! Cinderella, who did you make this dress for? Me or Gritzel? Um... It's clearly for me. Blue makes you look like a blueberry. Well, blue makes you look like a, a blue whale. Cinderella, please settle this. I, I, I made it for myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Funny joke, right? <laughs> no, not really. Gee, I can't decide who it would look prettier on. Me, obviously. Uh-uh, me. <laughs> Oops, I didn't like it anyway. Okay, well, let's see. I had started the day with a lovely ball gown, a diamond necklace, and glass slippers. And suddenly I had no dress, no jewelry. Well, at least I still had the shoes. They didn't fit anyway. Well, back to square one. It's finally the day of the ball. And I had nothing to wear. <laughs> what do you think, Pegasus? Could this be shabby chic? Yeah, you're right. Too casual. Cinderella! 
Come here. Ugh, gotta get to work. Meanwhile, hmm, no sign of Cinderella's old man yet, but I'll solve this case. Getting Gritzel and Unga ready was no small task. They required bubble baths, manicures, pedicures, blowouts. Finally, my stepsisters were ready for the royal ball. You guys look really nice. Um, we know. Okay, well, have a great time. <laughs> Unga, don't yell too much, and Gritzel, remember to say please and thank you. But don't forget to have some fun. That's quite enough talk, Cinderella. Goodbye! I'll be honest, I was kind of sad. I retreated to the barn with some snacks to eat my feelings. I know, it's pretty cliche, but I was sad, okay? And then, I don't know why, but I yelled out, Oh, if I only had a fairy godmother! <laughs> Yoo-hoo! What? Hello! Oh. <coughs> Excuse me, frog in my throat. What's up? Did you find my dad? No, not yet. But like, don't give up, kid. I just came here to scrub for clues. Clues? Here? Yeah, you never know what you might find if you just look. You okay? Me? What? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not crying or anything. Okay. Well, uh, see ya. He left, and I went back to feeling sorry for myself. Why? 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 Mr. Beeswax? Sorry I'm late, sugar, but better late than never, right? Who are you? Your fairy godmother. I thought that part was pretty obvious. Whoa, I thought that was just fairy tale stuff. Cool. A lot of people think that, but I'm real. Watch this. Awesome! I know, right? So how does this work? Do I get like three wishes or something? Three wishes? What do I look like, a genie in a bottle? Oh, so no wishes? Darling, I'm here to make all your wishes come true. But not all at once. It doesn't work that way. Oh. And some of the wishes will be wishes you didn't even know you wished yet. Say what now? I know what's in your heart, sugar. How? Honey, I'm your fairy godmother. It's fairy magic, you see? All right, so first things first, let's get you ready for the ball. The ball? Yes, I so want to go to the ball. I had a dress and a necklace and shoes, but my stepsisters, they tore everything up. Well, not the necklace. I gave that to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Long story, but I really, 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 want really- want to go to the ball, yes, I know. And with a wave of my magic wand. Cinderella had just been explaining in detail of the recent happenings that she had experienced to her fairy godmother. Yes, dear, I know. You want to go to the ball. So as I was saying, with a wave of my magic wand. Oh, yeah. Like, why wouldn't I want to go? Dancing, candy, disco balls, handsome princes, hopefully chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. OK, hold the phone, honey. We can't have you going to the ball looking like this. Ah, uh, rude. Well, I just mean you, you look uh, like a mess. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You just don't look like a princess, that's all. Okay, listen, fairy GM, I think you need to quit while you're ahead and just help a sister out. Right, so what's your favorite color? Blue, bluish aqua, turquoise, um, aquamarine, bright blue. Okay, all right, any shade of blue, I get it. With the wave of my magic wand. Yeah. And with all my magical powers combined. Yeah. I will give you the most beautiful, flowy, princessy, sparkly, on sale from Black Friday, huh? Ball gown. Yeah! <laughs> and what do you think, honey? I love it! Hi, what's this? Oh, nothing, dear. I'm so excited. The prince is deaf gonna wanna juju on that beat with me at the ball. <laughs> Uh, you won't be dancing with those tootsies. Uh, yeah, I'm due for a mani-pedi soon. Well, stick your hands out and close your eyes, my little ragamuffin love. Boopy boopy blabity boo. 
These are the bomb! Ooh, hopefully I won't break them. I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, they fit perfect! <laughs> okay, I better get on my way. Oh wait, pretty sure the castle is like 48 miles away. That would take approximately 864 minutes if I walk, if I hustle. Cinderella, and... get it together. I'm gonna hook you up. Now go get me a pumpkin, spaghetti squash, any gourd or root vegetable ought to do. Mm, no gourds to speak of, but how about this? My Halloween bucket. Well, let me just come get it. That'll do, I suppose. Cinderella put the bucket down, and with one more swirl of the magic wand, the bucket became a gorgeous, sparkling carriage. A carriage is kind of like a stroller, but for adults. <laughs> I am gonna look so cool riding up in this thing. <laughs> You're gonna look cool for sure, Cinderella, but you also need to act cool. You simply need to follow my four fabulous formulas for fetching friends at a farty. Excuse me, I mean party. Oh yeah, I could use all the help I can get. Step one. Always laugh at people's jokes. Or tell your own. Oh, I've been told I have an amazing laugh. Wonderful, let's hear it. <laughs> All right, that's very distinctive. Uh, maybe just take it down a few notches. Okay, whatever. What's next? Step two, find common interests. Cheese puffs? Oh, those are my favorite snack. Snack, jinx, <laughs> same. I love those. See, we're so similar. <laughs> Okay, cheese puffs, got it. Okay, number three, be a dancing queen. Okay, this one is easy. I love dancing. Let me show you how it's done. You go, girl, do your thing. Whew, I was quite the mover and shaker in my day. Okay, so number four, I'm getting antsy and ready to go. Oh, well, you better get a move on. Um, I'll text you the rest. Sounds great, fairy godmother. <laughs> I'm just gonna be myself and have a blast. Hey, uh, who's driving this thing? My stepmother wouldn't let me go for my driver's license test. I almost forgot, you over there. And y'all over here. <laughs> well, we're off. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything, fairy. <laughs> you're the bestest in all the land. Well, you're certainly welcome. This is gonna be the best night of my life. Oh no, I forgot to tell her about the midnight thing. What is wrong with you? You forgot to tell Cinderella about the midnight rule. What were you thinking? Yoo-hoo, Cinderella! The fairy godmother caught up to the carriage and shouted after Cinderella. But clearly Cinderella was having so much fun, she didn't even notice. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> ah! Oh, you, uh, you scared me half to death. Cinderella, you can't go yet. Ah, fairy, you gotta cut the cord and let me go. I'm a grown woman. No, I mean the spell. Say what now? The spell at midnight. You have to be long gone from the royal ball by then. Uh, I have no intention of leaving when the party is still hopping. No, you absolutely must. No. You have to. No. You have to. Cinderella, listen to me. If you don't, then all this magic will wear off. There's always a catch. But don't worry about it. Go, enjoy yourself. Just keep track of the time. No problem. <laughs> I'll set an alarm on my phone. So Cinderella continued on her journey to the castle, super excited and super nervous to meet the prince. You guys, this is going to be the best night ever. At the ball, Cinderella is having the time of her life. Woohoo! When suddenly she noticed two very familiar but not so friendly faces, her stepsisters. Ah, uh, brother, or should I say a sister? <laughs> These two. But the stepsisters didn't even notice her because they were too busy trying to vie for the prince's attention. Oh, by the way, there's the prince. Ooh, Unga, that prince is gonna love my dress. He's totes gonna dance the night away with me. No way, Grits. I'm sure he'll notice my breathtaking eyes and ask me to marry him. Meanwhile, Cinderella was doing her own thing and having so much fun at the ball. Then I told him, that's not a squirrel, it's a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Princey, you look hungry. Let me fetch you a treat. No, I will. Ugh. Cinderella was totally enjoying her night out and away from the barn that she kind of forgot there was a prince at all. Hey guys, who wants milkshakes? Cinderella, you are so much fun. Cinderella, guys, 
I don't want my stepsisters to overhear that I'm Cinderella. Please, um, please call me Sandy. sandy -rella. yep, that's me. <laughs> Why haven't we seen you around the kingdom before? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I've just been, um, you guys, oh no, I don't want the people to know I live in a barn and I'm basically a servant. Oh, what were fairies rules again? Oh yeah, common interests. Cheese puffs! Don't you guys love cheese puffs? Oh, cheese puffs. cheesy! Oh, yes. Those are amazing. Oh, I love yes. them so much. They're so good. Phew, that was close. So Cinderella got back to the party, but she also started getting a bit sleepy. Woo! I am pooped, but I can't stop now. Who knows when there'll be another royal ball? I'm sure I still got time. But the whole evening, the prince had been noticing the mystery girl, Cinderella, or <clears throat> Sandyrella. <laughs> and how happy she looked, and how she was being nice to everyone, and ate tons of cake without a care in the world. Whoa, she is a seriously cool chica. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, excuse me, oh, I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, no, no, it was my mistake. Here, let me help you out. So, uh, this is some party. Oh, this old thing? Yeah, my mom goes kind of crazy. Yeah, my dad's kind of crazy too. He was kidnapped by pirates. Yard. Pirates? Whoa. Yeah, pirates. Do you, you want to dance? dance? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh wait, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh my oh gosh. gosh. I like your crown. Thanks. I like your dress. Yeah, blue's my favorite color. No way. Mine too. Ooh, common interest. Bonus. So next week, uh, we're having this mini golf tournament here at the palace. Do you think you want to come? That sounds awesome! Cinderella had wondered how she would sneak away from her stepmother and stepsisters and come back to hang out with the prince, but whatever, she would figure it out. So it's a date, uh, I, I mean. But Cinderella didn't hear the prince because the music had gotten louder and she was feeling the beat. <laughs> so loud, in fact, that she didn't hear her alarm on her phone ringing. What's that noise? Huh? I said, what's that noise? Oh, it's just my phone. <laughs> oh no, my phone. I gotta go. Wait up, I didn't get your name. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh no. Wait up. Oh no. <laughs> well, it was nice knowing you, beautiful glass slipper, but I gotta go. Wait, you left your shoe. Keep it. Huh? At least the carriage is still... Oh, great. And so with one shoe, Cinderella walked all the way home, all 48 miles, which took exactly 864 minutes. She wasn't too sad though. I mean, guys, the prince danced with me a ton, and I made so many friends, and I did a conga line, and the limbo, and the robot. <laughs> And I must have had like five pieces of cake. <laughs> it was the best night of my whole life. That happiness lasted all through the next morning, even though her stepsisters were being particularly annoying. The prince is going to ask me on a date. No way. He's going to ask me. 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 Well, we'll see who he puts with at the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. The Royal Mini Golf Tournament? I almost forgot. And wait, Gritzel and Oonga got invited? Oh, boy. Mini golf tournament, huh? Don't worry about it, Cinderella. You're not allowed to go. Why not? Mom, tell Cinderella she can't go to the royal mini golf tournament. Cinderella, you most certainly cannot go to the royal mini golf tournament. Ugh, I hope that girl from last night doesn't go. She was the worst. What girl? This girl's Sandy or something. She hugged the prince for like a whole hour. So annoying. Gee, <laughs> yeah, I hope she doesn't show up. Cinderella decided she'd better practice her golf swing before the big tournament. Oh, you better believe I'm going. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'm going. Fairy godmother better come through for a sister. I'm gonna need some new duds. <laughs> what do you think, Sir Bonkers? How's my swing? Meow. <sighs> 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 I guess I need to keep practicing. <laughs> Finally, the big day had arrived. Time to putt. <laughs> Cinderella waited for her fairy godmother to arrive. I wonder what kind of outfit I'm gonna get today. Oof, and I hope I get a new pair of shoes. 
I love these glass slippers, but I can't golf in just one shoe. <laughs> I probably need sneakers anyway. Where is she? There she is. Ew. Mom says you have to go with us to the mini golf tournament. Yes! <laughs> okay, um, can I borrow a dress or something? I mean, I can't go looking like this. <laughs> you shouldn't go anywhere looking like that. But no, you can't borrow a dress. Unga, please! Cinderella, ugh, no one cares what you look like. We just need you to, like, hold our bags and get us drinks and stuff. Oh. So, like, hurry up. Guys, the prince can't see me like this. All right, fairy godmother, <laughs> it'd be super great if you could show up about now. Uh, okay. Fine, I'll just go to the prince's palace wearing rags. No big deal or anything. <sighs> eh? There she is. The big day of the royal mini golf tournament had finally arrived and Cinderella was there. Awesome, right? Not so awesome. My fairy godmother didn't show up. And look at me, I'm wearing rags at the palace. You know where the prince lives? Ugh. Meanwhile, my stepsisters are playing miniature golf with said prince. Can my life get any worse? Heads up. Ow, Oh, I guess it can. So yeah, Cinderella was pretty bummed. And so was the prince. He had really been looking forward to his mystery girl showing up. Why are you carrying around a shoe? Long story. And why do you keep gazing off into the distance? No reason. Hey, Prince, watch me putt. Huh? Oh yeah, that's great. I didn't even swing the club yet, ugh. Sorry, hey, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Do you know the girl I was dancing with the other night? Nah. -uh. Do you know her? What girl? I didn't see a girl. I have to find her. I must see her again. Oops. Heads up. Hey. Do I know you? Eek! The prince! What do I do? Play it cool, Cinderella. Play it cool. Uh, no, not me, mate. You must have me confused with someone else. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. What? Okay, gotta go. That couldn't have been. Or could it? Great. Just great. I blew it. Uh, Cinderella had really, really, really wanted to talk to the prince, but she panicked. She was sure the prince would just see her in rags and reject her. I mean, princes like princesses, right? Right? So that settles it. I cannot let him know that this is the real me. Hey, Cinderella. Oh, what? Uh, who's that? <laughs> Cinder who? <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Beeswax. You got news about my dad? We're getting real close to cracking the case, kid. I got one of my best guys following a pirate ship as we speak. That's great. Uh, what are you doing here? Official palace business. I can't discuss it. But between you and me, the prince has got a crush. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. Whatever. That's cool. <laughs> Who is it? That's classified, kid. But get this. He doesn't know her name. Go on. Says she showed up at the ball and then she just ran off. Go figure. He thought she'd be here today. But when she didn't show, he called me. So, like, what did he say about this girl? I can't really discuss it because I'm a private eye, the keyword being private. But he says she's super cool. Yeah. And really funny. Yeah. And a fabulous dancer. She sounds great. <laughs> yeah, but she said she'd be here and she didn't show. Kind of rude if you ask me. Oh, I'm sure she has a really good reason. <laughs> we'll see. The prince is a good fella. Hate to see him get his heart broken. Well, gotta get back to work. She could be anywhere. She could be right under my nose. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> well, the good news is the prince obviously totally likes me. Woohoo! <laughs> the bad news is I have absolutely no idea what to do. Several days passed and Cinderella had not heard any news about the prince and his mystery girl. She tried to come up with a plan. Maybe I, no. Well, what if I, no, that won't work. Oh, I got it. I could, uh, no. Cinderella, I need a pedicure. Right now? Yes, now. Me too. 
Haven't you heard? The prince is going around to every house in the queendom to find his dream girl. Say what now? He has the shoe, and supposedly he's going to marry whoever fits into it. So like, our feet need to look good. Yeah, we need prince-worthy tootsies. The prince is coming here? <laughs> yeah. And one of us is going to become a princess. Yeah. Me. No way. Me. 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 This Me. is going to be interesting. Me. 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 Cinderella was so nervous. The prince was coming to her house. Oh, man. Fairy godmother, if there was ever a time when you need to help a sister out, it's now. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? She tried rubbing a lamp. What? It worked for Aladdin. She tried wishing on a falling star. No stars. Shoot. And finally, Cinderella tried to conjure her fairy godmother with a magical spell. Blippity, bloppity, blob, blurpity, bleff, magicus, fairious, godmotherist, come it now! If. She's here! Yay! Hello! Official royal business! Open up! Oh no! The prince is here! Let me try on that shoe. Me first! No, me! One at a time, ladies! One at a time! Hi, Princey! Remember me? Sure, yeah. Hi, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Uh, looks like it doesn't fit. Sure it does. Perfect. I've never worn such a comfortably fitted shoe. And there are no other ladies in the house? No. Nada. No siree, Bob. Wait a second. Doesn't Cinderella live here? Cinder who? Never heard of her. There's another girl here? Please, fetch her at once. Your Highness, the other girl was not at the ball. I can promise you that. She lives in a barn. She's totally yuck. Nah, she's a lovely girl. I'll get it for you, Prince. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Mr. Beeswax. The Prince wants you to try on a shoe. He's still after that mystery girl. Oh, I can't go out there. I know you weren't at the ball, but it'll just take a minute and it'll make the prince happy. No, like, I really can't go out there. I'm a mess, beeswax. <gasps> what Unga said is true. I'm totally yuck. <laughs> what? You're a cutie. Come on. Okay. Now I really, really, really wish I had my fairy godmother. <gasps> Nothing? Come on! Hey, you look awfully familiar. Yeah? <laughs> I'm, um, uh, supposed to try on a shoe? Try not to stink it up. Well, what do you know? It fits! It's you! O-M-G! No way! Your Highness, I assure you, she was not at the ball! Well, actually, I was. <laughs> Super long story, but I really wanted to go and you wouldn't let me. But then my fairy godmother showed up and oh yeah, apparently I have a fairy godmother. <laughs> anyway, she showed up, waved around her magic wand and I got a dress and shoes, these shoes. Well, the other one's in the barn, but <laughs> anywho, then I went to the ball and I met the prince. <laughs> No big deal. Fairy godmother? There's no such thing as a fairy godmother. Sorry I'm late, Cinderella, but your fairy godmother is at your service. <gasps> Where were you? I needed you. I'm so, so, so sorry, honey. I've been at a fairy magic conference and these trolls crashed the party and it was just a huge old mess. Anyway, what's up? Oh, that's the prince over there. <gasps> oh, he's cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a mess, but they made me try on the shoe and of course it fit. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good thing. But now he knows I'm not a princess. This is terrible. <laughs> Cinderella, can you tell us what's going on, please? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, well, um, this is my fairy godmother. Fairy godmother, this is everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. How you doing? Hello. And now, with a wave of my magic wand, I will transform raggedy ragamuffin Cinderella here into a beautiful princess. Finally. <laughs> Wait. Huh? You don't have to change a thing. Cinderella, I like you for you. You do? Ew. You don't need a fancy dress or shoes or... Um, hold up. Uh, that's really nice and everything, but if my fairy godmother wants to hook me up with some new duds, then I'm a letter. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Okay, fairy godmother, work your magic. Bloopity blabadoo. I'll grab the other shoe later. <laughs> now me. No, 
my turn. Sorry, girls. A fairy godmother can only have one fairy goddaughter. No, no fair. fair. They'll get over it. <laughs> so it was you the whole time, huh? Right under my nose. Oh, don't worry. You're still my favorite private investigator. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me. With all the shoot trying on, hubbub, I forgot to tell you. We found your dad. You did? Yeah, my guy called me this morning. He's on the ship of Pirate Krusty Beard. Well, what are we standing around here for? Let's go rescue Cinderella's dad from the pirates. <coughs> Arrgh! What are you doing on my ship? We're here to save my dad, you crusty old pirate. Well, you don't have to be rude. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my girl. Dad! Who are you guys? Harvey Beeswax, private eye. I'm her fairy godmother. I'm the prince, and may I just say, I like your daughter, sir. Long story. <laughs> no time for stories. It's time for you to walk the plank. Ah, pirates! I almost forgot. <laughs> Allow me. Zippity, zamaboo, ta-ta, and bye-bye. Yay! OK. Let's pause for a second, because you're probably thinking this day couldn't get any better, right? I mean, the prince found me, my fairy godmother finally showed up and gave me some new princessy clothes, and now my dad had been rescued from the pirates. Talk about a good day. <laughs> but then it got even better. Get this, when we got home, Beeswax put my evil stepmother in the slammer. Turns out she hired the pirates to take my dad. So evil, right? Anyway, it was pretty much everybody lives happily ever after fairy tale kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, and we decided to let my stepsisters stick around, but they were a lot nicer now that I was a close personal friend of the prince. <laughs> they even started doing their share of the chores. Amazing! I knew there would be a happy ending. Hi everyone, today we're reading Rapunzel again. This time, can you find all the hearts? Stick around until the end to see how you did. And parents, don't forget to click the link in the description below to follow us on Instagram for even more games, updates, and all things cool school. Okay, let's go. Once upon a time, there was a man and woman who were very much in love. Let's just call them Tom and Sally. Sally was gonna have a little baby. They were so happy, but also nervous because they didn't have very much money. How are we going to afford all that baby stuff? Diapers and bottles and pacifiers and baby books and baby toys and baby blankets and baby bouncers. Calm down, you worry too much. Everything's gonna be fine. No, not fine. Look, we don't have enough room for a baby. And don't even get me started on Dame Gothel. Did I forget to mention that they lived in a teeny tiny hovel rented from Dame Gothel? Yes. That Dame Gothel, the witch. No one knew for sure if she was a witch, but she wore very witchy looking clothes and had a very witchy laugh. <laughs> so yeah, Tom was right. Her backyard wasn't exactly the best place to raise a baby. One night, Sally awoke with the most peculiar craving. I'm hungry. I could go for some Rapunzel flour. What? You know. Those little weeds that taste like spinach? I want some. Where am I supposed to get Rapunzel at three in the morning? Dame Gothel has a growing in her garden. She'll put a curse on me if I steal her Rapunzel. Oh shush, she'll understand. And so that's how Tom found himself creeping around in the witch's garden at three in the morning filling up a basket with Rapunzel flowers. He had just pulled up the last weed when... Him, just what do you think you're doing? Uh. Borrowing? No, you're stealing! I didn't mean to, I promise! My wife was just hungry. She's having a baby. A baby? Yes. Do you like babies? I love babies! I'll make a deal with you. I won't send you to prison if you let me take care of your baby. Like, babysit? Uh, okay. Sure, like Babysitting. <laughs> Dame Gothel cackled her witchy laugh, but Tom didn't get what was so darn funny. Uh, okay. Thanks. No, thank you. Okay, see you around. When their baby girl was born two days later, Tom had completely forgotten about his deal with Dame Gothel, but she did not. I'm here to take my baby. What? Me and him made a deal. I think I'll call her... Rapunzel. And with a puff of smoke, the witch disappeared, taking the baby with her. Uh, Our baby! Oh no! Stop her! 
Tom and Sally were beyond freaked out. They called the police and formed a search party, but no one could find Dame Gothel and baby Rapunzel. It was like they had disappeared into thin air. But of course they hadn't just disappeared. You know this part of the story. They were in a tower deep in the woods. Here's what you might not know about this fairy tale. Dame Gothel wasn't entirely witchy. She actually tried very hard to be a nice mommy to the new baby. She gave her the best baby toys. She sang her the sweetest lullabies. rock a baby on the treetop. Well, she tried. Dame Gothel even tried to make silly faces to get Rapunzel to laugh. But baby Rapunzel must have known that this wasn't her real mommy, so she pretty much never stopped crying. The only thing that could calm her down was when Dame Gothel brushed baby Rapunzel's hair. Oh, thank goodness, finally. Dame Gothel spent so much time doing Rapunzel's hair that she got really good at it and eventually tried out pretty much every hairstyle there is. And Dame Gothel didn't dare cut Rapunzel's beautiful hair. So over the years, it just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. By the time Rapunzel was a young lady, it was like world record length. Hey, Dame Gothel, you think I could enter a hair competition or something? I bet I could win a big prize. You know very well that you can't leave the tower. Hmm. <sighs> Right, there was that about Dame Gothel. She wouldn't let Rapunzel leave the tower, not even on a super nice sunny day. Maybe one day. I heard that you're not going anywhere. Yeah, but one day I'll get out, she'll see. Heard that too. Let's talk about what it's like growing up in a tower away from all civilization. It can get pretty lonely and very, very boring. Here are the things Rapunzel did to keep herself entertained all those years. I learned to knit. I read every single book in the tower library at least three times. I learned to cook international cuisine. Come on and get it, spaghetti taco sushi. I taught myself different languages. Hola. Aloha. Konnichiwa. Buongiorno. Alo. I learned to dance. Ballet, tap, salsa, and hip hop. I gave myself piano lessons. I counted all my hairs. 1,341, 1,342, 1,343, 1,343. I wrote jokes. What did one wall say to the other wall? I'll meet you at the corner. <laughs> I studied the effects of boredom on mice. Day 453, Sir Squeakly ignores his cheese. I made jewelry. I learned to meditate. Then one day there was a knock at the door. What could that be? Dame Gothel never knocks. Yo, hello! I'm selling craft boxes. Do you want to buy one? Craft boxes? Yeah, they'll keep you entertained for hours. That sounds awesome! Come on up! Well, hi there! I'm Crafty Carolina. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Crafty Carolina. I'm Rapunzel. Oh, that's nice. Do you live up here all by yourself? Well, my mother, Dame Gothel, lives here too sometimes. But now that I'm old enough, I stay here alone a lot. Oh, you really shouldn't give so much information to strangers, dear. Oh, well, I never met a stranger before. <laughs> well, that's odd. Anyway, may I show you my crafting wares? Check that out. It's crafting box. Cool! I'll take two. One for me and one for Dame Gothel. Oh, well, score. All right, I'll sign you up for two. Uh, you got money? Money? Yeah, you know, that you buy stuff with. Uh, no, I, I don't, but I'll trade you. How about this giant sweater? Kind of warm out. Oh, well. How about this DIY jewelry? It's nice, but... Not really your style? Not really. Okay, well, why don't you just hang out till Dame Gothel gets here and she'll pay you. Okay! So Rapunzel and Carolina spent the rest of the day making crafts. Those 
disgusting arms. Finally, Dame Gothel arrived, but she was very jealous and didn't want to share Rapunzel with anyone. So she was not exactly happy to find Crafty Carolina there. Get out of this tower! But she's nice, and she's selling these super cool craft boxes. This is what I think of craft boxes. Hey, that's not nice. You're next. Ooh, Ooh. All right, gotta go. You are so mean. She could have been my very first friend ever. You don't need friends. You have me. Yeah, you're like a great friend. That's it. You're grounded. Grounded? But I'm not allowed to leave anyway. Well, now I'm boarding up the door so no one can ever come here again. But how are you going to get in? Oh, right. I know. I'll call Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And you'll throw your hair out the window and I'll climb up it. Really? It's a good plan. And so Dame Gothel closed up the tower so that no one could ever visit Rapunzel ever again. Rapunzel was sad. She had always been alone, so she never knew what it might be like to have a friend. Now that Rapunzel knew, she felt extra lonely. It was taking some serious getting used to pulling Dame Gothel up the tower with her hair. Ow! Ow! Oh, take it easy! Rapunzel took to singing lonely songs, belting them from the tower window. Lonely, I am so lonely. I ain't got nobody to be up in the tower with me. All by my lonesome. All these years I'm alone. All these years I'm alone. <laughs> la la. La la. La la. So lonely. It was quite the show. One day Rapunzel was doing her usual, seeing sad ballads from the tower window, when two brothers, princes, heard her voice in the forest. Halt, what's that? A sick animal crying for help? No, it's an angel. Uh, okay. I must find her. You're on your own, dude. I'm going back to the palace. Peace. The first prince set off to find the source of the singing. But the forest was echoey, and at every turn it sounded like the singing was coming from a different location. It was like he was going in circles. But then, just before nightfall, he found her. <gasps> She's beautiful. The prince, who was named Prince Edward, by the way, returned every day for a whole month. He would just sit and listen, silently applauding at the end of each song so as to not be noticed. At home, his brother Brad teased him. How's your girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. You totally like her. Edward has a crush. No, I don't. <sighs> Whatever, dude. Well, maybe I do. And one day I'll talk to her and we'll fall in love and then I'll ask her to marry me and be my queen. This got Brad's attention. You see, Prince Edward was next in line to be crowned king, but there was one catch. He had to be married. Prince Brad had always assumed this would never happen and that he would become king. He already had a girlfriend. Princess O'Gree, so marriage would be no problem. Edward's way too shy. He'll never even talk to the tower girl. I'll marry Ogret before dad retires and then I'll be king. The next day, Prince Edward set up his usual spot and listened to the sweet sounds of Rapunzel singing. Are you there? <sighs> Are you anywhere? Then suddenly the singing stopped. What? No, keep singing forever. I wonder who that could be. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel, is that the name of the lovely songstress? I love it. Then the prince watched in awe as Rapunzel dropped her golden braid down the side of the tower. That little old lady is climbing her hair like a rope. How strange. The prince waited and watched the tower window until again the braid dropped down and Dame Gothel climbed to the ground and hobbled away. Prince Edward waited to be super extra sure Dame Gothel was gone. Then he approached the tower. He cleared his throat and called up in his best witch voice. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Huh? Again? I wonder what she wants now. Oh! Sorry, I must be heavier than a little old woman. Who are you? I'm Prince Edward. A pleasure to meet you, my lady. A prince? Really? That's so cool. <laughs> May I come in? Oh, I'm afraid not. I'm not allowed to have any visitors. Oh, really? That's a bummer. May I use your hair to climb back down? No, it'll hurt you. Never mind. I'll just jump. No, don't jump. You'll hurt yourself. You can use my hair. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to go. I waited an awfully long time to talk to you. 
you have. <laughs> yes, every day I sat down and listened to you sing, dreaming of the day I would finally meet you. Really? I mean, I guess I am a pretty good singer, so... The best! I wish you could stay too, but I'll get in so much trouble if Dame Gothel finds you here. How about this? I'll climb that tree and we could talk from there. That way, we're really not breaking the rule, are we? Brilliant! So Prince Edward climbed down Rapunzel's hair and then back up the nearest tree. So your name's Rapunzel, huh? Nice to meet you. And it's nice to meet you, Prince Edward. Prince Edward returned every day to the same spot to talk to Rapunzel. They talked about everything under the sun, like, what's it like being a prince? It's pretty cool, I guess. Sometimes the crown makes my head a little itchy. What's it like being locked away in a tower? It's okay, I guess. Sometimes I wish I had a pet. A nice cat or a dog. I've read lots of books about dogs, and they seem super nice. They are. Row, and sang row, songs row, together. Row, 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 gently down the stream. Uh, Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. They even played catch. <laughs> Sorry! I'm okay. Finally, one day the prince realized something major. He was definitely, most assuredly, in love with Rapunzel. He couldn't hold it in a second. Rapunzel, will you marry me? Good thing for Eddie, Rapunzel felt the same way and said, yes! Awesome! But wait, I can't. I'm not even allowed to talk to you, much less marry you. The prince was stunned. Surely your mom wants you to be happy. Well... What? I don't think she's my real mom. Really? I think she took me from my real parents. I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes I think I can remember my real mom. Well, then that settles it. We're busting you out of here. We'll find your real parents, and then we'll be married. Okay, but not now. Dame Gothel will be here any minute. I'll come back for you tomorrow. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And hurry, my feet hurt. Back at the palace, Prince Edward couldn't contain his excitement. I'm getting married, I'm getting married. But I'm Prince Brad heard married, Edward's song. I'm and that's not good, married, kids. Remember, I'm Brad wanted to be king, married, and their dad I'm was retiring his crown in just I'm one month. If Edward marries that girl, then he gets to be king. I have to stop this! Prince Brad jumped on his horse and rushed to the tower. He arrived just in time to see Dame Gothel climbing down Rapunzel's hair. That must be your mother. I'll just have a little chat with her. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. What do you want? Pardon me, but I thought you might like to know that a rapscallion of the lowliest order is plotting to abscond with your fair daughter. A what is doing what now? A bad guy is going to take your daughter. What? Never! Wait, how do you know? Prince Brad told her everything, including the fact that Rapunzel had been meeting with Edward every day for months. Dean Gothel was livid. That means very, 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 very angry. Rapunzel, Rapunzel! Let down your hair! What's wrong? You know what's wrong. You were planning to leave me after everything I've done for you. Well, don't be mad. I just want to marry the prince. Is that so bad? If you want to go, then go. But first, I'm cutting your hair. What? No! Why? I love my hair! <laughs> but there was no arguing with Dame Gothel. She cut off Rapunzel's long locks and kicked her out into the cold, dark night. Rapunzel wandered the forest, hoping that somehow she would find Prince Edward. But she had never left the tower in her life. She didn't know where to go. Eventually, she found a hollow in a tree and curled up inside to sleep. I guess this is kind of like my tower. The next day, Prince Edward awoke, eager to see Rapunzel. He sang his song again. I'm getting married, I'm getting married. He sang and whistled all the way to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let that hair down. I'm coming up. The braid dropped and he climbed up. We're getting married, we're getting married. Ah! You were coming to take my Rapunzel, weren't you? Where is she? She's gone. You're my prisoner now. And just to be sure you don't get out, I'm tying you up. <laughs> Dame Gothel left the prince tied and locked up in the tower. Earlier it had been the happiest day of his life. Now it was the saddest. Back in the forest, Rapunzel was desperately trying to find her way back to the tower. Edward will be getting to the tower any minute now. If I can just find my way back, we can run away together. But it was no use. Rapunzel's sense of direction was limited to going in circles in the tower. Edward! Edward! She 
didn't know where she was going or what she was doing, but she was not gonna give up. Edward! Meanwhile, in the tower, Prince Edward was calling out for her too. Rapunzel! Edward! Rapunzel! Edward! You get the idea. Poor Rapunzel had been wandering the forest for days. She had learned to survive by watching animals. First, the squirrels. Hmm, okay. They eat the little nut thingies that fall off the tree. Okay. <laughs> Blech. Nope. Then she looked to the birds. Hey, haven't you heard of sharing? <laughs> Finally, she saw a deer munching on an apple. Hmm, I can do that. Mmm, delicious. The apples gave her new energy and she set off again determined to find Prince Edward. She walked and walked and walked and walked. And then, rather suddenly, she found herself in a whole new world. People! Hey, people! <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Cheese Emporium. Wow, so much cheese. Mm. <laughs> Tommy's Toys and Trinkets, awesome. <gasps> Betty Baldy's Beauty Parlor. <gasps> hey, maybe she can fix my hair. Hi, are you Betty Baldy? Sure am. Hi, Um. so my mother, well, I don't know if she's really my mother, <laughs> long story. But anyway, this woman cut my hair off and I was hoping that you could do something with it. Well, sure, honey. Sit down, let me fix you up. The side pony. Pigtails, beehive, how's that? Love it! You got a big date or something? Well, <laughs> I'm supposed to marry this prince, but now I can't find him anywhere. It's like he disappeared. Oh, story of my life, honey. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, gotta go. <laughs> you gotta pay first. Oh, right, money, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, so I don't have any of that, but I can work. So Rapunzel agreed to be the hair sweeper upper for the rest of the day. She was busy at work when she saw a familiar face coming in the door. Dame Goggle. And she's wearing my hair. It was true, kids. Dame Goggle seemed to have taken Rapunzel's blonde braid and fashioned it to a wig of her own. You got some hair. It's all natural, too. Yeah, right. You say something? Me? Nothing. Anyway, I need a very special hairdo. I'm going to a ball at the palace tonight. A ball at the palace? How fancy. It's an engagement party for the prince. Rapunzel's jaw dropped. Engagement party? The prince? My prince? What? And wait a second. Why is Dame Gothel going? Something's not right about this. Rapunzel decided that she had better follow Dame Gothel to the party. Uh, hey, I'm, um, I'm on the list. Yeah, OK, see ya. Now where's Edward? I have to find him. Edward's not here. Who are you? I'm Prince Brad, but when I get married tomorrow, I'm gonna be King Brad. The brother. And who are you? I'm, um, uh, what's that? Oh, okay, coming. I have to go. Talk to you later, okay? <laughs> Wait, I recognize you. You're that girl from the tower. Rapunzel tried to rush out of the palace, but she somehow got caught in a conga line. Edward is supposed to be king, not Brad. Something is seriously wrong here. I bet that old stinker Dame Gothel has something to do with this. Oh, I gotta get out of here and find Edward. <laughs> Finally, I thought we were gonna conga forever. Okay, how do I get out of here? Food! Oh my gosh, delicious! Then Rapunzel heard Dame Gothel's voice. Don't worry, Edward's locked away. He'll never get out! <laughs> but I saw the girl from the tower. What's her name? Cozumel? It's Rapunzel, and I'm telling you there's no way you saw her. She's lost deep in the woods. There she is now! Get her! Ah, gotta go! Rapunzel tried to run away, but once more got trapped on the dance floor. This time, it was a limbo contest. Ah! Too low! I'll get you! Rapunzel finally found the door and ran away from the ball. 
Okay, so Dame Gothel has Edward locked away somewhere. Like, in jail? But he would never commit a crime. Wait, so obvious, Rapunzel. He's in the tower, but I don't know how to get to the tower. I looked and looked and looked before, but it was no use. What if I go back into the woods and get lost forever? Oh! Rapunzel didn't know what to do. She was just about to break down in tears when another familiar face appeared. Well, you look like someone who could use some cheering up. And you know what I do to cheer up? I cry up. Crafting Carolina, hi! <laughs> do I know you? I'm Rapunzel, the girl from the tower. Oh, you changed your hair. I like it. Oh, that mean woman from the tower isn't here, is she? Dame Gothel? No, thank goodness. Wait a second, I thought you never left your tower. She kicked me out just because I fell in love. Well, that's not nice. Tell me about it. And now she's got my prince locked in a tower. And I don't know how to find my way back to rescue him. I'll never see him again. Well, wait a second. I know how to get to the tower. It's on my sales route, remember? Oh, yeah. Can you take me there? Well, sure. But we can't go now because it's dark out. And I don't mind telling you, I'm a little bit afraid of the dark. It's one thing, you know, when you're in town, but do not get me started on the woods after dark. It's so scary, the wind howling in the trees, weird noises like <coughs> Ow! <coughs> I'm sorry, did I scare you? Well, I just thought about the poor Prince Edward locked away in the dark tower. He's probably scared and lonely. <sighs> okay, let's go. What? We're gonna go rescue Edward! Really? Now? Well, we gotta get some supplies first, but yeah! We can be brave! Yeah! Let's go save that prince! Yay! After Crafty and Rapunzel stocked up on all the important stuff, crafting supplies and snacks, the two set off into the woods to find the tower. They were only a little bit scared. <laughs> be brave! Right, okay. <laughs> what? We got this. Be brave. Right. Brave. Very brave. Not scared. <laughs> That's it. I'm going back. No. No. We got this far. There's nothing here in the dark that isn't here in the daytime, too. But what about animals that sleep during the day and come out at night like bats? Bats are scary. Oh, yeah. But you said we'd be brave, so let's be brave. Wait. What was that? What? Shh. Oh, yeah. I definitely hear something. Hide! Huh. Oh no, not her! She must have suspected I would come out to rescue Edward. What are we gonna do? Uh, be brave. She's probably going to the tower. Let's follow her, but we have to be quiet. Right! That was too loud. Sorry. Rapunzel and Carolina stepped forward following Dame Gothel, and then they realized they were already at the tower. They didn't recognize it before because it was covered in thorns! Ouch! Uh, who's there? Oh no! Hide! Uh, I'm not jumping in there! It's prickly! Rapunzel, what are you doing here? Uh... Rapunzel, be brave! I'm here to save Edward, so let him go! Never! His brother is going to be crowned king, and then I'll get a seat at the royal council! You? Why? Because I'm the one who got rid of Edward. Duh. Now go away before I lock you up, too. Well, not on my watch, sister. Crafting Carolina tossed a giant net over Dame Gotham, trapping her. Awesome! Where'd you get that? I made it. Crafty. Hey, let me out! No way. OK, we took care of Dame Gothel. Now we got to save Edward. Uh, uh, how are we going to get up there? Wait, I know. What's that? <laughs> Grappling hook! Oh. Never know when you're gonna have to scale a wall! <laughs> but we'll still get scratched up, won't we? Oh, well, I also brought scissors! Obviously! Can't crave without scissors! Here, take a pair! The two snipped away until the last of the thorny vines fell. Grappling time! Edward! 
Rapunzel? Edward! You changed your hair! Do you like it? <laughs> I love it. Oh, Edward. Rapunzel, my darling. My prince. Um, guys, super sweet reunion and all, but it's almost morning. We gotta go stop a wedding. Huh? Oh, right. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, what about me? Sorry, Gothel, shouldn't have been so mean. Rapunzel, Prince Edward, and Carolina rush to the palace. Edward? My son! Dad! Hi! I missed you! Uh, sorry to interrupt a nice moment again, but we gotta stop this wedding! What? Stop the wedding! What did she say? Stop, stop the, the wedding. wedding! You're too late. I'm king now. No! Well, that stinks! Tell me about it. After everything we've been through, first I was locked away in the tower, like my whole life. Then Dame Gothel kicks me out and I wander around lost in the woods for days. And then poor Edward gets locked away in the tower, scared and all alone. Finally, we heroically rescue him. But then bad guy Brad gets to be king anyway. It's not fair. What's this? Edward locked in a tower? Yeah, isn't that awful? Brad, Edward's own brother, plotted with evil Dame Gothel to lock him up in a tower so that he couldn't marry me. She's lying. Oh, no, I am not. And of course, Dame Gothel went along with it because she's just jealous and she's just playing mean. She is lying, I tell ya. Guards, arrest her. <laughs> not so fast. I'm still wearing the crown here and I have some questions. Ugh. Fine. Now, young lady, did I hear correctly? Did you say you were supposed to marry my son? Yes, sir. That was the plan, your majesty. And you rescued him from a tower? Yes, he was tied up and left all alone. So I climbed up and busted him out. I helped. <laughs> True. And Bradley, you knew Edward was locked in a tower this whole time? Daddy, I'm telling you, they're making this all up. I would never hurt my own brother. It was all that lady, Dame Gothel. And where is this Dame Gothel? We captured her in a big net. I made it out of yarn. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> well, I've heard enough. Guards, go get this Gothel and take Brad to his room. He's grounded indefinitely. Oh, that means forever. <laughs> no, I'm the king. I'm the king. And as for you. Yes? Thank you for rescuing my son. You're very welcome. Do we get to be married now? <laughs> yeah, can we, Dad? Can we? Well, we were all set up for a party. What do you say, everyone? How about a royal wedding? Yay! And are there no objections this time? Excuse me. So sorry to interrupt. Do you object to this union? No, sorry. Did you say Dame Gothel locked you in a tower? Yes, you know her? She's the worst, right? What's wrong? Rapunzel? Rapunzel? Yeah, who are you? I think those might be your real parents. No way. Are you serious? Mom? Dad? Rapunzel? Rapunzel. She has my eyes. She has my hair. Well, it used to be blonde and super long, but that's another story for another time. <laughs> well, this is turning out to be a very happy ending. Yeah, now let's have a wedding. Yay! <laughs> Sorry, I always cry at weddings. I, I can't help it. And so the two lovebirds were finally married and Rapunzel's long lost parents were there to celebrate with them. It was the happiest of days. Just like a fairy tale, don't you think? So did you find them all? Let's see. There's one. Oh, found two. Number three is right here. Where's four hiding? There. Found number five. And number six. 